Hey guys, Dr. Kyle Loveless here on my drive time here. I'm gonna give you a top five to health video today. We're gonna talk about headaches and um, really headaches, migraines, kind of putting those into a bundle there. I know they're not exactly the same, but they um, still a good majority of the time. We're gonna talk you know, cervicogenic headaches and migraine headaches, and they tend to go start from the same area in the body. You know, the difference is that migraine headaches are gonna be mostly lack of blood flow to the brain and causing this extreme pain and, and aura and other stuff that comes with the migraine, whereas cervicogenic headaches is gonna be more of the muscle spasming in the back of your neck, creating a headache. Um, but altogether, they both really stem from the same area most of the time, which is, 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 is the uh, upper neck. You know, they've shown that migraine headaches are either um, hormonal or um, you know, just not enough blood flow to the brain, which is, in my opinion, the same thing because the hormones are what's gonna create that many times. But that upper cervical part of your neck, the atlas and occiput junction there, the, the actual vertebral artery that feeds blood supply to your brain comes through this top bone in your neck and feeds the blood to your brain. And any um, issues in the upper part of your neck here can cause spasming to that artery. Um, also, you can cause, um, you can have, if you have a stretched spinal cord from loss of curve in your neck, if your neck is straight, it pulls on the dura mater. You know, you've heard of an epidural before. Um, that's where they go underneath that dura mater. That dura mater, when it stretches, it puts your body into a stressed mode, can cause spasming of the arteries, can cause um, dilation, or I'm sorry, constriction to the arteries, and it can also, that stretching, um, can cause fatigue, can cause all kinds of stress response in the body. So there's a lot of reasons why, and, and to be honest, um, the this research, full exact explanation of why people get migraines isn't um, isn't set and no one fully knows. I'm giving you my, um, from all the research and all the patients I've worked with and all the things I've done over the last 10 years, what I truly believe it comes from, from what I've seen, from, from um, the studies I've read. There's a study out that said 90% of migraines come along with neck problems. Um, actual symptomatic neck problems like people feel neck pain too so there's there's a lot of things showing that this is right and physiologically it makes a lot of sense because when we get this moving the body heals itself we have a patient um, right now awesome patient she started probably two months ago and she's had migraines every day before that and um, I've been to every neurologist taking all the medications never done chiropractic the way we do it and um, she started getting adjusted and she's never, she hadn't had a migraine since. She started to have one come on um, two different weekends over that two month period, and but it never completely, um, you know, came to about, came about. So that's, that's pretty awesome. You know, that, that's a transformed life right there because she was literally being debilitated by those migraines. Uh, but it also tells us that she's now getting the blood flow to her brain that she needs, which is more oxygen to your brain, which is all the other stuff that you need for overall health because your brain controls your body. So let's do the top five to health to headaches today. Again, if you're not getting migraines, you're someone that deals with cervicogenic headaches, that's gonna be a neck issue, and that's gonna come from forward head posture, being on a computer all the time, car accidents, injuries, falls, sports injuries. Um, if you do a lot of sitting, that's gonna be one of those things that causes it. If you sleep on your stomach, there's a good likelihood that you're gonna get cervicogenic headaches or neck pain, numbness, tingling into the hands, all those things can come from that. So I wanna dive into the ideas or the concept of the top five. So we got five things I'm gonna give you today on how, what can you do to, to help with headaches, like actually get to the root cause of it, and then some of these are gonna be things to help with the symptoms. So the first one I'm gonna give you right now is um, a, a supplement called Magnesium Calm, and really it's just magnesium, okay? Many times when we're low and our body is deficient in magnesium, whether it's from um, not eating enough healthy food, whether it's from a digestive issue where our body is not absorbing the magnesium properly, whether it's from drinking too much caffeine, too much sugar, being too stressed, all those things can lower our body's magnesium levels and just really electrolytes in general. Um, that low magnesium level can cause constriction of the arteries and cause migraine headaches along with other health issues, muscle issues and other things as well. So take a supplement, a good thing to do, whether you know if you have a magnesium issue or not, because the truth is when you take this, you're gonna get diarrhea if you don't need it. So it's not gonna hurt you. So I would say take Magnesium Calm. It's a supplement that we use It's a powder. You put it in warm water, drink it in the morning and evening. Also calms the system, helps you sleep good at night if you're having issues with that. So Magnesium Calm, that's number one. Number two is, um, is I'm gonna go straight to the, 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 the main thing that I recommend right off the bat, is get your spine checked. Essential, the number one thing you can do, the number one most important thing you do. You can try all these other things I'm talking about, but that's typically not the root. It's not the key, it's not the root cause of the problem, which is up here. After 10 years in practice, I've done with so many migraines up here. It's upper cervical issues, 
and almost everyone that's come in with migraine headaches we've been able to help. The ones that it hasn't gone away, it either isn't up here, which is rare, um, there's a lot more going on than that, or um, it is up there, but it's just something we haven't been able to correct. That's how it goes. Uh, it's unfortunate. So, um, upper cervical issues, get x-rays of your spine. I'm a big fan of A to P open mouth, so an x-ray from the front with your mouth open so they can see that atlas, that top bone in your neck, an x-ray from the side so they can see the curvature and the, and the um, positioning of the atlas and the rest of your neck, and then also um, flexion extension x-rays so you can actually see what is shifting, what's moving, what's not moving in your spine, and you can also do there's, there's base posterior x-rays. Um, I know these are terms you might not know, but you can go back and listen to these videos and maybe find a doc that wants to do these x-rays for you, okay? They can also check for alar ligament damage, which is, so this top bone in your neck, there's a ligament that attaches to um, your atlas and your axis, which is your second bone in your neck, okay? So you have your atlas, which is C1, your axis, which is C2, and they attach to each other by a ligament called the alar ligament, and that helps you from, you know, when you bend your head like this, when you tilt your head back from your head, just kind of shifting off. Well, with car accidents, with a lot of um, stretching, if you're someone that is like like sleeping in your, um, on your stomach all night long with your head twisted, if you're someone that has really, really loose ligaments, you know, I see this a lot with dancers and gymnastic, people in gymnastic, really flexible and loose ligaments. Um, down, yeah, yeah, so you'll see that. And so that, that alar ligament um, will be torn. It can tear, it can slightly tear, or completely tear, um, and the only way to help with that, really, I don't have surgeries for that, the only way to help with that is you have to strengthen the muscles around it. So there's certain exercises and there's certain adjustments you don't want to do if you're going to a chiropractor if you have ALR ligament issues. So they need to be checking for that as well. Very important. It's one of the most common ways you'll get ALR ligament issues is if you're driving and someone slams into the back of you and you're staring at your mirror and you go boom like that. It can tear those ligaments. So number two tip top thing to do is get your spine checked, evaluated, find the root cause of the headaches. CAT scans are usually the last thing I would recommend for a migraine. Um, I think they said that uh, over the last, uh, in, in a year period of time, over 11,000 or 11 million, one of those two, either way it's a big number in my, in my mind. 11,000, let's just say that because it's smaller. Um, out of one out of every 11,000 CAT scans for a migraine headache, one out of four people that goes to the hospital for a migraine gets, gets a CAT scan without the protocol that they're supposed to do, which is a massive amount of radiation and probably cause health issues down the road. Um, one out of 11,000, I'll have to look this number up. It's, it's, a, it's a large number, so it's one out of 11,000 or one out of something really big, like 10 or some thousand. Um, one out of 11,000 actually has a tumor. Actually, it's something that was significant on that on that MR, on that uh, CAT scan. So the CAT scan isn't your first choice, even though it tends to be the first thing they do. If that makes sense, hopefully it does. All right, so that's it right there. You got you got your um, get your spine checked by a chiropractor, someone does spinal corrective care, and someone that is working with migraines regularly and does do the proper X-rays. If you go to someone that's uh, you know a chiropractor that doesn't do X-rays, I don't recommend that because you could again you could have alar ligament issues. You could have uh, uh, the second vertebrae in your neck twisted or rotated one way or the other, and then their adjustment they can't feel that. Their adjustment can actually make you worse. So you gotta, you gotta do with someone that knows what they're doing too, okay? For chiropractic care, if you want help with that, go to queencityhealthcenter.com and uh, schedule appointment time. We'll help you figure out what's causing your migraines. Third thing I wanna give you, third tip for migraines, and this is in the moment. I actually love this one It's because it's weird and I like weird things, is in the moment when you're having that migraine, you can actually take cayenne pepper. Yeah, and I don't mean take it like eat it. That's, that's intense. You, th you think that's intense. You can actually snort cayenne pepper, okay? Apparently that dilates the brain, <laughs> the, the arteries really quick and you can, uh, it gets rid of the migraines. Or it's just so painful you don't think about your migraines. I don't know, I've never had a migraine, I've never tried snorting cayenne pepper, but I've had enough people tell me that that is a really good thing to do. So it's not gonna hurt you. It isn't actually as painful as it sounds. You know, it's actually more painful just to put it on your tongue. So um, try that. You can also use, quick side tip, you can use cayenne pepper for, for blood clotting. So if you have a cut, you know, or maybe one of your um, family members is on a um, blood thinner, you know, a lot of the older community, they put them on blood thinners and they cut themselves and they don't stop bleeding. My dad uses this when, on his tractor. He keeps uh, cayenne pepper right there. Anytime he gets cut, just puts a little cayenne pepper on it, clocks it. Pretty cool. So um, that's number three. 
cayenne pepper is a great thing you can do as well. Hey, something on a regular basis, if you're someone with migraines, is you also wanna be looking at your caffeine intake. So this is tip number four, or top four things, is if you're drinking a lot of um, caffeine, caffeine can help in the moment with a migraine. Unfortunately, too much caffeine will cause constriction of the arteries later, and that will cause more migraines. So you gotta be careful. It's kind of like one of those catch-22s. It helps you in the moment, like Excedrin is a, is a um, something they use for migraines and it has caffeine in it, and that's one of the reasons it works. So it can be helpful for the moment. One problem is it doesn't get to the root cause and actually it will cause you to have more migraines down the road. So number four is, is look at your caffeine intake and try to reduce that. And even though you might take a lot of caffeine and you start to reduce that and it seems to be getting worse, um, the first week or two is because your body's trying to not getting used to having caffeine anymore. And um, that's just, it is what it is. You gotta go through that. So look at your caffeine intake number four. Hey, the final one, that you can do is, and this is a preventative measure, is look at how much screen time that you're doing. Okay, if you're on a computer, well, I'm gonna do this twofold because I only get five, top five here, and I'm gonna give you two in the fifth one. Screen time and how you're sleeping. You heard me talk about sleeping on your stomach. Sleeping on your stomach is one of the, <clears throat> excuse me, sleeping on your stomach is one of the number one reasons people get neck issues, uh, ligament damage in the neck, but what we'll see with that is neck pain, shoulder pain, numbness tingling in the hands, but more, bigger and we see the most of is migraines or headaches in general. So because you're sleeping like this twisted all night long. So headaches, it's a, or, or so sleeping in your stomach. So you wanna sleep on your back with your head in a neutral position, right? Not like this, not like this with too many or not enough pillows. Um, typically very thin or no pillow at all is the way to go. Or on your side with your head even, not like this. So you wanna be in a neutral position. That's number, that's, that's number one of part five. The final the part of part five is gonna be computer time or screen time. How much are you like this? You know, not only is it the blue lights really intense on your eyes and cause it puts your body into a stress response and can cause migraines. So if you're, if you're on computers all the time, you definitely either wanna have a cover for your screens that's a yellow cover that it gets rid of the blue light or get glasses that are called blue blue screen glasses. You can order those on Amazon. Go to Amazon and just order blue screen glasses so that when you're looking at it, you're not being overstressed in the eyes because that's a systemic stress to your body. It is, I mean, people that are on computers all day, they are stressed. It's just impossible not to be unless you're doing other things to counteract what that computer is doing to you stress-wise and help get your body resilient to the stressor of that computer. So. Sometimes I feel like I'm just talking. I hope I hope, you, I hope this stuff is clicking, guys. So the other thing is, is if you're on a computer all the time, try to find ways to um, reduce your time, number one. Number two is try to find ways to be in a good position ergonomically, meaning like if you're on a computer or a pad, don't be head down like this for long periods of time. That stresses your neck and the upper part of your spine. And then also if you're on a computer, make sure the computer's up at eye level. Bring the keyboard next to you so you're not like this. All that stresses you. Bring your mouse next to you so you're not way out here, okay? so in this good position here, and then get up and move at least every 15 to 30 minutes. That might sound like a lot, but it, it really is. They said the key to health is movement. 90% um, of the stimulation to your brain comes from moving your spine. They, the, the Journal of Internal Medicine showed in 2012 that prolonged sitting, regardless of your workout schedule, meaning if you work out every day but you sit the majority of your day, it increases all-cause mortality rates. So it's a big deal to be sitting all day long. It's, they, they call it the next smoking. I've read studies that show that actually smoking a pack of cigarettes a day is better than sitting all day. So that's big for you, for you, those of you guys that smoke and you sit all day, it's not good. So movement is key, okay? And you can get wobble cushions, you can get one of those exercise balls, you can do all kinds of stuff to where you can still work and move, but you gotta move, okay? So hey guys, that's my top five to health for headaches. Number one, um, magnesium. Number two, or magnesium calm is the, is the, the type I, I recommend. You can get that at any health food store. Number two, Get your spine x-rayed properly, evaluated by a good chiropractor that's gonna do the x-rays, do the exams, do the findings, and tell you what to see and teach you about that too, give you things to do at home and start adjusting your spine properly. The third thing is um, look at your, I believe it was look at your caffeine intake, and then number four, um, I already lost my things, sorry. You go, go back and listen to them. I know the fifth one was computer's time and how you're sleeping at night. There's one missing in there, but you'll find it. Hey guys, you guys have an awesome day. Go to queencityhealthcenter.com if you want more tips for your health. Hopefully this is helpful for you. Hopefully me being in the car isn't too informal. Um, but you know, I, I, ultimately I just wanna make sure you guys get as much uh, information as you can, but at the same time start implementing that, taking the information you're getting and putting it into action. Not just being aware, that's the first step. 
I spent many years of my life learning and learning and learning and learning. And I realized, you know, self-help books, uh, you know, how to communicate, how to do all this different stuff, but I wasn't using it. And a lot of stuff I'm still not using. And that does nothing for us. So watching this video essentially gets you, might get you energized and thinking, hey, there's answers out there. I can do something about it. But if you don't act on your awareness, it does zero for you. It actually is a false sense of success. And then when you realize it wasn't successful, you think this didn't work and you quit trying. You're like, oh, no, that didn't work. What he, what he said doesn't work, but you never actually did it. So that is also a very, 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 very big key is take one thing. I give you five things. If you're this overachiever and you know you can do all five, go for it. But take one, maybe two, maybe three things that you're going to implement from this thing. And I would say go get checked, get your spine evaluated first. That is essential because if if you if it is your spine, you're doing these other things. They might help with the symptoms, but the oh cayenne pepper that was the other one. But they might help with the symptoms. However, they don't get to the root cause, and that root cause isn't just causing migraines. Migraines is a symptom. Migraines is what you're feeling. Migraines is your body war your body's warning sign that there's a problem in your health in your body and if it is an upper neck issue that upper that nerve in the upper neck goes to your heart it goes to your lungs it goes to your digestive system it goes to your every part of your um, uh, uh, reproductive system it goes to your immune system it tells every part of your body to relax digest food sleep that's your parasympathetic nervous system it's your vagus nerve right up here if that isn't working properly and that's being irritated or stressed it puts you into a stress mode and you will build major health issues um, long term so you got to get to the root calls. Cool. All right. Hope you enjoyed this uh, quick top five to health with headaches. Like it, love it, share it. Please comment. Please share um, any of your tips with me on how we can do things different, better, or give you um, better answers. If you want to learn more about your health, go to queencityhealthcenter.com. Go on YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're doing at least three to four videos a week, trying to get as much information out there as possible and get people um, engaged in, in thinking about their health. The world we live in today, you have to be your own health expert, and this is the cheapest way to do it. <laughs> Okay, you're not going to get it from your medical doctor. Unfortunately, that's just not what they do. Uh, they're going to treat symptoms with medications and things like that. I couldn't do a video without, without, without that in there. All right, you guys have an awesome day. We'll talk to you later.